Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Michael Schenkel, and I'm the chair of ANC2C. And I'd like to welcome you to the August 8th meeting of ANC2C. Um, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, we usually do not have an August meeting. Um, however, there is, has been so much business and activity occurring um, in uh, 2C that we wanted to, uh, to have this meeting uh, with you tonight. So I would like to officially call this meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. And uh, I would like if each of the commissioners would uh, introduce themselves. And we'll start with uh, Commissioner Strauss. Hi, I'm uh, Becky Strauss, and I represent ANSI uh, 2C02. I've got to change that. <laughs> awesome. August. <laughs> August. It's August. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Commissioner Rowe. Hi, I'm Kristen Rowe. I am the commissioner for 2C04, which is city center and downtown. Awesome. And I am Commissioner Michael Schenkel from ANC 2C, which includes uh, Chinatown Penn Quarter. Um, Commissioner Lee uh, from 2C03 is not going to be present with us this evening. He is uh, currently on travel. Um, so we do have a quorum of three of four uh, commissioners present. And I would like to um approve review the the agenda and uh approve that agenda for this evening um so tonight um we are going to first hear uh some community announcements from um our government officials um under local events that impact the community i would like to add uh commissioner nigro uh, to the agenda this evening to talk about the um, the uh, cell block holding cell uh, that will be coming to New York Avenue and what 2G is experiencing with that. Um, we have four um, APCA license. I will get that right someday. It just doesn't flow off my tongue quite right yet. Um, and then we have um, a transportation and public space um, event to cover um, as well. Are there any other commissioners? Are there any other additions to the agenda for this evening? All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Yes, I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda, including the addition of Commissioner Nigro and uh, that uh, topic. Awesome. Second. Okay. And all those in favor? So three of three commissioners voting in favor of that. So the agenda is approved. Uh, Commissioner Rowe, would you like to talk about <laughs> our minutes? Yes, we have received several months worth of our minutes. I reviewed them this morning. I have four to submit to be approved. Uh, that the, the ones that I sent you um, earlier today, Commissioner Schenkel, are the minutes for the March, April, May, and June 2023 meetings. Um, I would like to submit those for, make a motion to submit those four months of minutes for approval and posting to the public. Awesome. Uh, are there any, uh, are there any, um, well, I will, I will second that uh, okay. before I, I, we go to a vote or like, is there any, discussion or any additional modifications um, from any of the commissioners? No. Awesome. Uh, I thought, sure, we had all of them, uh, but... The ones that were marked as July were June. Yes. Like it was I, a repeat of June, so I think it was just a technical error, yeah. but we're, we're way further down the line than we have been in the past, so I'm exactly. going to take the W on four months getting approved at once. Yes, exactly. We'll get them approved and, and over there. So uh, we do have a motion and a second on the floor um, to approve the minutes. All those in favor? So three of three commissioners voting in favor of uh, uh, those four months of minutes, approving those four months of minutes. 
thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we do not have a treasurer's report this evening as uh, Commissioner Lee is uh, not here. Um, we will then move forward to community announcements. And first up, I saw that we had on uh, with us this evening, um, Lieutenant Garvin. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Mr. Shankle? Very well. How are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm great. Um, good evening to everyone that's on the call as well. Um, <clears throat> here to talk about, um, give some crime updates. Um, our robberies are up, and, I, and I'll circle back to that. Um, our ADWs, will assault, what dangerous weapons are down. Burglaries have decreased. Um, a decrease in theft from autos and theft theft from the stores. And also we had like an even out of motor vehicle thefts, which we had 12 the previous 30 days. And we had actually had 12 um, this 30 days. With regards to the robberies, um, the majority of robberies that we're seeing are near or around our club zone areas. Um, they're happening late at night, you know, hours between... 11 p.m. and all up to 5 a.m. in the morning. You know, I'm amazed how people can still party that late, four o'clock in the morning. Um, a lot of it is occurring, I believe, due to, you know, um, diminished sense of awareness. Um, some folks are leaving um, these establishments, um, maybe a little bit intoxicated, um, not paying attention to their surroundings and things of that nature, um, which is making them easy um, targets. Um, and although we do have units um, assigned to the club zone areas, it's, it's a lot of clubs in the second district. Um, and we try to do our best to man those with um, overtime as well as um, um, other districts come in to assist um, with club overtime, like I said. But we also have to handle calls for service on these club nights. So Thursday night, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's pretty busy. Um, with these establishments. Um, as, of, as of today, we've recovered 259 guns um, in the second district um, since January the 1st. And that's that's a lot. Last month, the month of July was 48, 48 gun recoveries. Um, and a lot of those weapons are in the club zone. Um, they're in vehicles. Um, you can actually see them in plain view. Um, traffic stop, we, we conduct traffic stops, you know, people who may be, you know, drinking and driving things of that nature and they have guns, illegal guns on them with no permit. So, um, although we're getting the guns, there's still a lot more to get. Um, unfortunately we did have an, um, ADW, which was closed by arrest. Let me turn my radio down. I'm sorry. I'm the watch commander as well. Um, at the 700 block of 11th street. And this happened around 3 38 AM in the morning. Um, two individuals were engaged in a verbal altercation. Um, one individual produced a silver handgun um, from inside of their vehicle and pointed it at the um, the weapon at the individual. Uh, we arrived on the scene and through invest further investigation, there was a prohibited weapon in the vehicle and that individual was placed under arrest. So again, a lot of our um, gun recoveries do come from or near or around um, bars and um, late night establishments from people coming from different areas of the city. We have people coming in from Baltimore, Virginia, um, different neighborhoods. Um, some um, do have beefs, um, not showing who they're going to run into. So I guess their mindset is I'm going to come stay prepared. They're coming from the seventh district, maybe sixth district, and they know they may run into um, individuals in their neighborhoods where they might not have um, a good rapport with you know, to say the least, um, they try to stay prepared. So again, I mean, 259 weapons since January 1st, that is a lot of um, gun recovery. So um, that's all I have. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant Garvin. Um, I know that the, um, I saw reports of a, of a stabbing on 15th Street just recently um, in the last like two weeks. Um, um, and I get, you know, those little alerts that pop up on my my phone with um, be on the lookout for, I believe it was three uh, females that were fleeing the the scene. Do you have any update on what happened there as well? 
Yeah, so this was a case of an Uber driver who picked up individuals from um, in front of the park nightclub. Um, individuals were in the vehicle. Um, apparently something happened. I don't know if it was a verbal altercation. Um, the victim is saying that um, it was an argument over the air conditioning. Um, after that ensued, um, he said he felt a puncture to the left, um, to the rear of his back. Those individuals got out of their car, got exited his car, got into another vehicle and left the scene. Um, that case is still under investigation. Uh, we're still trying to figure out exactly what has occurred, but those suspects have been identified. Um, so that case does have legs. Um, we're moving in the right direction. Um, but a very unique case. I mean, uh, I mean, we're 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 really um, we are in bad shape if an argument over the air condition can cause someone to want to stab you. Yes, exactly. Um, commissioners, do you have any other questions for Lieutenant Garvin? Not uh, this time. But thank you so much, Lieutenant Garvin, for being here. Yes, yes. thank you very much. Thank you as well. Um, any community members um, have um, any questions for Lieutenant Garvin for 2D? And I see we have uh, Commissioner Lee joining us from um, afar. <laughs> London. London, oh, London, terrific, awesome. All right, if we have no other questions, thank you so much, uh, Lieutenant Garvin, we appreciate you. Yes, thank you, everyone. So, um, Next, uh, we have uh, MPD one, and I see uh, Lieutenant Nicely on the call with us this evening. Yep, I'm here. Um, I want to take a quick minute. Captain Roth is uh, is gone on to other pastures, and uh, we have a new sector one captain, Captain Williams. I think she's on this call. If we could just introduce her real quick, if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. Hi. Hi. Hi, Captain Williams, Captain you Williams. On here? Hello, everyone. I'm Captain Sherelle Williams, newly assigned to Sector One. I'm happy to be here. I'll be working the evening tour, and Lieutenant Nicely will guide me through your needs and what, what's already pending in your district and your area for your crime patterns. Thank you. It's very nice to meet you, and welcome to um, ANC 2C. Um, we look forward to working with you and uh, continuing our work with Lieutenant Nicely as well. Great. So, I look forward to you too. Awesome. And I know that uh, Captain Roth was uh, pr promoted um, and uh, is now an executive officer um, under Assistant Chief Bryant. Um, so that's why our changes have occurred just recently. So uh, we wish Captain Roth well. Yeah. So um, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm Lieutenant Nicely. I'm the first district manager for PSA 101. That's the uh, Chinatown side of the equation for you guys. Um, quick look into the numbers over the last 30 days versus the prior 30 days. Uh, violent crimes down 44 percent. We saw a 50 percent reduction in ADWs, 33 percent reduction in robberies. So we're looking pretty good on that front. Um, we had a pretty good reduction in burglaries and uh, motor vehicle thefts. We're still struggling with retail thefts um, and some of the thefts from auto. So we're digging into that a little bit. Um, we had uh, we had the one ADW that we did have occurred at 6th and H Northwest. Um, it occurred early in the morning, about 2.30, 2.40 in the morning. Uh, a gentleman came into the district. Uh, he uh, was attempting to purchase some controlled substances uh, at 6th and H in a after midnight drug deal, um, I guess. It seems like it's on video. It seems like they had some sort of confrontation, like maybe a, a drug deal turned into a robbery. Um, during that altercation, um, the suspect pulled out a gun, uh, fired it a few times. We got a call for the sounds of gunshots. We were there pretty quickly. All we found were shell casings, uh, no victims. Several hours later, we got a report from a hospital in Virginia that there was a victim. And that's how we came into the story from his side. He left, went to Virginia, sought medical treatment for relatively minor wounds, given that a gun was involved. Um, and uh, from there, we're trying to 
get some video footage. We had to go through the subpoena process for some of the banks and some of the things in the area to try to get some of this video. Um, I would say that the case is moving forward. I don't think a suspect is identified, but I think we're working towards that goal. So I'm pretty optimistic that that will inevitably inevitably be a closure. Um, other than that, we had some big stuff in Chinatown this week. We had a three day initiative mm -hmm. um, starting on Wednesday. We uh, conducted some enhanced uh, enforcement operations. We had 17 arrests on Wednesday, 16 of which were either for gun or drug violations. Uh, we recovered a total of two handguns that day, and we made 13 uh, drug distribution related arrests. Um, the vast majority of those cases were papered by the U.S. Attorney's Office. 14 of the 17 were papered, and those people were issued stayaways and are now being adjudicated in D.C. Superior Court. Um, we had some other initiatives. Uh, that, that kind of we had a community walk, community cleanup, did some things with Wild Luck House um, later in the week. So we had a pretty good presence in Chinatown, pretty good turnout. We saw a lot of people, um, and I think had a pretty positive impact. Very little, uh, very little crime uh, actually occurred over those three days with that heavy presence. So I appreciate everybody from all the other branches of government that came out. Um, other than that, if anyone has any questions, I can dig into anything a little bit deeper. No, I think uh, I was going to ask you about the the three day um, event. So I'm really pleased that that um, happened. And uh, I know that the U.S. Attorney's Office has been um, asking for stay aways for individuals that have uh, committed crimes and have been uh, papered, uh, which just started in, I believe, just started in June. I mean, in July. Um, that those uh, started happening. So hopefully we'll see some reduction um, in folks that have been committing crimes, um, being being staying out of the area, not re-offending um, in the area. Um, yes, yeah, stayaways are valuable. I'll tell you this uh, based on my experience. I don't think they actually deter people from coming back to the area, um, but what they are good for is now we have a tool um, that our Chinatown officers and our patrol officers and PSA 101 can use. Um, you know, if we find them violating that stay away, um, it's an automatic arrest. Um, and then at that point, we can start having the conversation about whether these people actually need to be held if they're not going to comply with that order, if they're in contempt of court. So I don't, the stay away is valuable for uh, as a tool uh, going forward. I don't know that the state, it would be na naive for me to think that the stay away would keep these people from coming back. Um, but then maybe we're set up for success with what that looks like on the back end of that violation. Got it. I know that it was a question that emerged um, in the town hall meeting with um, council member Pinto. Is there, is there a mechanism for community members um, to help with the identification of people that have stayaways? It's like, I, I don't know that. I don't know if there's people's pictures are posted or, or whatever. I don't think that it's proper. I don't think it's proper for us as a law enforcement agency to disseminate people that have stayaways as part of a pending case. Mm. I'm, I've never seen that precedent before, and I don't. And I think that would be us discussing discussing a pending criminal case in a way that's inappropriate. Um, I don't. I can look into that a little bit more, but I think that, that as much as that is helpful and comes from a good place, I don't know that it's proper. Got it. And I'll have to figure out more about that. Sure, most definitely. Uh, commissioners, do you have any other questions uh, for Lieutenant Nicely? Uh, we have one uh, community question on the floor, and that is uh, uh, Mr. Marks. I have a, a question also, by the way. Okay, so Susan, yes. Yes, thank you. Sure. Howard? Okay, go ahead, uh, Chairman. Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm also away in Northern Idaho, not uh, not like Thomas in London, but still very nice. Um, so, Lieutenant, one thing that remains to be very murky is who has jurisdiction at the top of the escalators at the north end of the... Uh, Gallery Place Chinatown Metro stop. On Monday morning, oh, I would say around 6 a.m., uh, we wanted to descend the set of elevators. Uh, we're heading to Dulles Airport. And there they were again at the top of the escalator, the drug dealers. 
Like, my God, we had this lengthy discussion at the town hall meeting, and they're there. Uh, is it Metro Police? Is it you? I know it's. I know that area is actually owned by Oxford Properties. Yes. So, what's the deal? So the deal with that is, it is private property technically. There's a the, basically the line of the the colonnade and where the brickwork is different is more or less the property line. So that's private property. But um, if there is a plain view criminal offense that is seen by an officer, they uh, they may address that. So, and then that's true for Metro Transit. That's true for MPD. Um, so several of our uh, distribution, drug distribution arrests on Wednesday were took place under that awning right there at the entrance to the escalators. Um, but so it's not necessarily, it's inappropriate for the off, my officers to go and patrol it unprompted. But if they're there and they see a crime, they can address the they can address the crime if they have probable cause to enforce it. And also Metro Transit can address the crime if they have probable cause to enforce it. So there's not uh, one agency is not handcuffed from enforcing against it. They just have to have a legitimate uh, reason to be there and not just I wanted to wander on private property and see what happens kind of thing. Um, so there should not be an agency telling you I can't enforce anything there. Either one can. Um, they just have to have observations that give them probable cause. So when we see that again, uh, do we call MPD? Do we call Metro Transit? Who do we call? I would call MPD. Um, but I guess the question is, like, I know that we're all suspicious when we see, uh, you know, cert when we see some of these groups in that area, when we see them like mobbed up and we're suspicious of what they're doing. But I guess the, the question is, um, you know, a, a, a 911 call to MPD that says, I think there's guys dealing drugs here doesn't, you know, suffice for probable cause to an officer to arrest them. You know what I mean? So I just want to make sure that if, if we are, well, call regardless, right, we're still going to do what we can with it. But just to give the officer the best chance to actually do something probative and productive, the, as specific of information as you can give, um, you know, is actually going to lend to them being able to take enforcement action. Yeah, well, I, I think this is for you, Commissioner Schenkel. Uh, we, we need to examine what laws have to be strengthened, what direction, because it's really intolerable. You're not dealing drugs, but just sort of lurking there at the, uh, and, and, and blocking, incommoding, which I think is illegal. Uh, the, those escalators, it keeps going on and on. Got Regardless it. of, you know, I think it's something that's going to have to be taken up by uh, uh, Council Member uh, Pinto. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. I mean, uh, Lieutenant Nicely. Um, is is it simply because it is private property, or um, is it a lack of an agreement with the property owner to enforce in that area? No, yeah, I mean, there's just a certain, you know, no, it, there's not a lack of agreement. There's not a lack of cooperation from Gallery Place about it, um, that, that there is cooperation, but it is just kind of a weird, unique circumstance that like a public transit access comes up through private property. So that's kind of, there's not really other parts in the city where we really see that problem. So it's like, the, the issue is just, it is private property. Officers have to have a specific reason to go to private, beyond private property. Or have a specific, you know, whether that be in, they observed a crime from a place they lawfully were, but in order to go there and like patrol it, there's got to be something that prompts it. It can't just be random, right. um, you know. And and again, like now the officers are entitled to walk through it to go down and do a metro check, like that's reasonable. But it is just kind of like a weird, it, it's it's just a weird scenario. And I, I certainly don't want to ask the officers to put themselves in a spot where we end up with some very peculiar case law and they're the guinea pig in that process. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Um, um, Susan, you are next on our list. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, you know, Michael, you know, and Howard, you know, and probably many others on the call know, many of us have been working for years to try to address the blight of amplified noise here on our block at the, on a corner at 7th and 8th Streets Northwest. And I would just like to put in an impassioned plea, Captain Willis and First District Manager Nicely, please don't have the police contribute to amplified noise on the street corner. 
Um, it really harms our buildings so badly and we're already dealing with enough. Thank you. Could, could you could you just um, tell me um, the contribution that is being made or observed? Oh, yes. So, Michael, I sent you, I, I cc'd you on an email that mm -hmm. went out to many other people in the District of Columbia. So I, I hope that um, government, I mean, um, and, and I hope fo folks received it. Um, I was driven out of my apartment by extremely loud noise. But as I was getting ready to leave my apartment, I looked down on the street corner and saw a large number of people standing in the bus lane and some in the traffic lane um, of 7th Street on the northbound side. So I did everything in my power to contact the powers that be to get these folks back on the sidewalk when I was still in my apartment, again, dealing with the loud noise. Um, I called 911, I was transferred. I talked to a woman who told me that from the Department of Transportation that that is illegal, but that her department doesn't work with enforcing it. And she transferred me back to 911. I called the Metro police and they told me that it wasn't their department. I called Captain Roth, but I, I think he was on vacation at that week and he didn't, I didn't get a pickup. Um, I, sent mess, I sent photos and text messages to the tip line, but I didn't get a response. So I decided to head down to the street level to find police on the ground. And when I got there, I was shocked and horrified to see that the people creating the amplified noise were in fact police officers and that there were police officers there, including first district manager nicely, who were allowing the people to be an audience in the street um, and refused to ask those people to go back into the sidewalk. Okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lee. Uh, yes. Uh, when is the, will there be another um, operation um, in, in Chinatown uh, of the sort that you just mentioned earlier? And um, number two, uh, to Howard's Mark's uh, remarks, um, we had discussed, I think, at the town hall at MLK Library, uh, uh, Chairman Schenkel, uh, an idea was floated about um, passing area-specific anti-loitering laws. Is that something that we as an ANC can pass a resolution uh, to, to, you know, at, at a meeting and then, and then get this in front of our councilwoman? Uh, so I guess that's a two-part question, one for... Chairman Schenkel and one for Officer Nicely. Yeah, I'll just address the Chinatown uh, operation real quick. Um, the uh, yeah, the short answer is yes. Uh, there's going to be uh, more enforcement of that, like on a slightly smaller scale. Um, I didn't sleep a lot last week because that was a very large uh, 72 hour plan um, that required a lot of babysitting, but. Um, there's going to be a smaller, more scaled down version that I'm trying to put into place. Ideally, I want to do it every 30 days. It might turn into more like every 90 days. Um, but yes, yeah, something similar is going to uh, is going to keep going forward. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Commissioner Lee, we are very happy um, to develop and entertain a resolution to Council Member Pinto. Um, and to the actual, the entire um, council, if we would uh, desire to do that, um, we would have to develop that and present that at our next meeting. And um, Tasia, is that correct? I'm sorry. Hello. Hi, Tasha. Tasha, yes. Yes. Hi. Uh, quick question. Um, are the those four wheel ATVs legal on the streets? No, they're illegal. Um, do they get pulled over? Because they've been very frequent in the uh, the intersection. 
they will not yield to traffic stops. It's a misdemeanor offense. Uh, and so by its very nature, that's not the type of thing that we would be able to engage in a pursuit over. Oh, so they just keep going then you can't pursue them. Correct. Oh, okay. Um, yes, it's, it has been an ongoing issue um, across the city for quite a while. Okay. Um, and um, from that Thursday meeting at the library, um, they had mentioned that um, a police force will be coming back to Chinatown. Um, is that still going to happen? And if so, when? Um, I'm not certain. Are you talking about the, the Chinatown unit? Is that what we're referring to? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, the Chinatown unit. Um, I don't know who said that, if that was an ask. People in the community ask me for that multiple times every day. Um, yeah. And it would be great if we could do that. I don't know where those officers would come from because there are none, to be honest. Um, we have the Chinatown unit still exists. We have two officers in it, Officer Wong and Officer Davis. Um, so they are here and they will do everything they can do in the hours that they are at work within a reasonable work week. But um, uh, I don't I would be surprised if that comment came about bringing Chinatown back from a MPD personnel, because I don't know where that staffing would come from. Okay. Yes, awesome. it was it was community questions, community yeah. Yeah. Um, comments that that was raised. OK, and then Mr. Schickel, I have one final question. Um, I actually sent some examples of amplified um, noise with photos um, to the council on Thursday, but I haven't received a response or anything like that. Um, just was wondering if I should send it to somebody else. Or... Um, I would uh, recommend that you send it to council member Pinto's office. I think it, I sent it to like the DC council, that email address. I would send it to uh, council member Pinto okay. um, directly. Okay. I'm happy to supply that email address. And okay. uh, Pablo is on, he'll be speaking in a couple minutes um, and we'll probably share his address as well. Thank you. Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Lieutenant Nicely. We appreciate you being here tonight. Yes, sir. Awesome. Um, we'll move now to the office of the, uh, the of the mayor uh, for board two, mayor's liaisons, Christopher Powell. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Let me share my screen real quick. Just have brief updates for everyone. Uh, first of all, there's a um, just want to make sure everyone knows there's a plethora of information from DDOT and DPW on storm cleanup, you know, just in the wake of two unexpected storms. I know 2C doesn't have a lot of tree density and a lot of cover from buildings, but um, there still could be some debris or limbs. Um, and if you're unsure on how to have those taken care of, there's a lot of information on Twitter. I can um, also link it to you as well. Here's one of the graphics that breaks a lot of that down for you. Uh, as well as just, you know, some information about it was last week, maybe two weeks ago, we had a big sports related announcement uh, from the mayor. She's created a DEMPED sports team that will work closely with district's professional teams and coordinate across district agencies with events DC to maintain, expand and attract world class sports teams and sporting events in Washington, DC. Um, as well as the fact that uh, Chairman Comer and Congresswoman uh, Holmes Norton introduced, oh my God, sorry about that, uh, legislation that would expand the district's lease of RFK campus for 99 years and allow the campus to be redeveloped for a mix of uses. So hopefully we can get the commanders back in the city. Um, another uh, interesting note is Metro is rolling out uh, new higher fare gates, to stop fare evasion. Um, I know I talked to uh, Howard Marks about this a bit this afternoon. So uh, I'm going to make a point to talk to um, senior leadership and maybe we can work with Metro to try to elevate uh, Gallery Place, some Chinatown stops uh, to that list or to the top of that list, if that makes sense. 
um, as a priority for that project, but we'll see. Uh, and this is also old news, but we've been away for a bit. You know, Mayor Bowser has uh, selected Pamela Smith as the new police chief, which is very exciting. Um, and she has over 24 years of service with the Park Police. Um, just some brief upcoming events. I believe it's late September, Mayor's Arts Awards, which is always very fun, um, but the nominations open up uh, and they'll close 5 p.m. on August 17th. So if you know DC creatives, artists that you'd like to nominate, you can do that. Um, and also it is a free public event. So when RSVPs open up, you can also RSVP for that ahead of time. Oops. Um, that's another reminder as we're getting back, back to school. Um, uh, DYRS is just hope hosting community events where you can meet them. They're providing backpacks, school supplies, uh, uniforms. Uh, this is going to happen at 401 Oklahoma Avenue Northeast um, on the 25th of August. And also take a moment to remind everyone, uh, make sure the kids are vaccinated before they head back to school. Um, but yeah, if you guys would like to talk, have coffee, or do a walk around the neighborhood, you can contact me or my partner, Grace. Um, Tuesdays, Fridays preferred, but we can make other days work if you give us some time. Um, and this is our contact information right here. I'll leave it up for a second, but that's all I have today. Uh, if there's any questions I can try to answer. Commissioners, do you have any uh, questions? Uh, uh, Commissioner Rowe. Hey, Chris, um, for the backpack giveaway, is that for every ward, any ward, any kid who needs a backpack? Um, the one that's on Oklahoma Avenue, I think that's Ward 7, right? I know it's hosted in Ward 7. I don't know if it's Ward 7 specific as far as distribution goes. I can do a little research and find out for you. Okay. I would just like to be able to give it to a couple of schools in Ward 8, you know, send it, but I don't want to um, overwhelm your resources. So. Oh, no problem. Uh, you. you just shoot me shoot me an email and I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, yes, I, I would uh, greatly support the need to um, elevate the Chinatown um, retrogrades or retro fitting of the, the station uh, to prevent fare evasion. Every morning, I am surprised that I feel like I'm the only one that pays for Metro um, in, in the city and that I when I'm riding on the train. Um, it is absolutely crazy to me that there is no enforcement um, of this at all. Zip under any station that I have been to. Um, and these barriers, um, as we have seen on the news, um, People just jump right over them. So maybe we can put an electrified fence on top of them or something <laughs> to help them in Some that barbed situation. Wire. Bob wire, I don't know. Uh, but the city has so many programs to help individuals and uh, with low income that have uh, financial insecurity about riding Metro. Uh, students ride free up to the age 24. Um, I mean, there are so many programs in the city um that is offered and it is it's just crazy to me that this continues to happen and and mm -hmm. last evening i don't mean to harp on this but last evening i went to the concert at uh, nationals park and this group of of kids um young adults early 20s came up to the gates and said oh you don't need to pay for metro no one ever does anything uh so it's just a, a continued lack of repercussions um, so we hope that um, there are repercussions that happen to people that uh, violate the rules. Um, it's just it's just really sad that there are those of us who continue to <laughs> pay for transportation. Um, I, I'm ready to start just jumping over the the barriers myself because no one's doing it. No one's doing anything about it. Um, and I know how you feel, Michael. It is definitely frustrating, especially when you see everyone else around you. Um, I think when I was younger, my my first trip to Europe with with friends, you know, they had very lax 
metro system and they were like oh yeah just come through and maybe like seven people you know seven of my friends went through and i was like i'll just get it it's a dollar you know it's like a dollar and by the time i got down the escalator to meet them they were already detained by you know the the european transit police they got like a small fine but it was one of those things where it's not always easy just to do the right thing even if right. it's like morally right um right but especially when you see everyone else doing it i um and i do echo what you said before there are a lot of programs i was reading an email about um they i believe they're baking in some incentives with snap programs yep. to include metro fare as well yes Absolutely. Thank you. Sorry to vent my frustration. Um, Commissioner Lee. Yes, uh, well, uh, speaking of Chinatown, will the higher fare gates be for all the stops or just like the, the entrance and exit at 7th and H? Um, and uh, and just, a, just, just a casual observation, uh, I have to, when my daughter, you know, um, sees fair evaders she has asked me you know what's going on shouldn't they be paying and i have to explain to her it's it's it, 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 it's a strange and awkward conversation uh, <laughs> for me to have with my own daughter you know who who's young and impressionable and, and oddly you know the strange thing is is that you know and this has happened to me before as well if you were to if you forgot your wallet at home um you can just go up to the go up to the conductor and say hey by the way i'm sorry i forgot my wallet you know uh, please let me through, and they'll let you through. Uh, they'll let you through the side gate. It, it just seems strange that you know that people have to jump over the fare. But anyway, uh, so my question is: Will it just be at Seventh and Nature, or do you think it'll be for all uh, all the stops at, at the Gallery Place Metro stop? I was under the impression it was all. I don't. I don't know yeah. for sure. I, I can look into it. I know they did the announcement, um, and they're they're rolling out each station um, slowly. Um, ultimately, the goal when I talked to Howard was just to, you know, bump up the priority of Chinatown. But that is a bigger, a um, little busier station than a lot of um, some of the suburb stations they were starting at. So we'll see. I'll let you know. So, and um, I see that uh, Howard Marks. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Schenkel uh, and Chris also, thank you. Uh, for your presentation. Uh, so Metro uh, released a list of 10 stations, uh, priority stations uh, that uh, for hardening up uh, and putting in, uh, making it more difficult, not totally eliminating, but making it much more difficult to jump the gates. Unfortunately, the Gaylor Place Chinatown station was not on the list of the 10 initial stations that were gonna be hardened up. Uh, I find that a little shocking because uh, our station leads the system in the number of evaders. You would think that Metro would have put that number one on the list. So what happened is the pilot at Fort Totten was apparently a success. They were able to uh, learn lessons about how to tighten up the system. Uh, and yet when they released about two weeks ago, this list of 10 stations, Guess what? Chinatown Geller Place wasn't on it. They said retrofitting all the stations would take uh, a year. Well, you know, those always get delayed. So I would urge uh, Chairman Schenkel, if it's possible, for our ANC to send a letter to uh, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, to Randy Clark, the general manager, urging that the Geller Place Chinatown station be uh, put in the initial list of stations that are going to be retrofitted. We, I don't know, by the way, uh, my assumption is that all three entrances to the station will be taken care of. H Street, F Street, and 9th Street would be taken care of. But that letter would be very helpful. Thank you. And that was going to be my, <laughs> my next re request um, in this situation. Um, we can definitely send, I believe, send a letter um, encouraging them to um, bump that up the list unless there is some other significant reason that they're not uh, willing to do that or not doing that. Um, so um, I, I would I would just like to move that ANC2C sends a letter 
to Metro requesting that the Chinatown Gallery Place stops be prioritized for the retro great retro gate um, upgrades to prevent fare evasion. I second that motion. All those in favor? So three of three commissioners voting in favor. I think I lost Commissioner Lee. Um, it's like midnight this time. Yes. No, uh, he's, he's, he's there. He's there. Oh, he's there. oh yeah. I lost him on my screen. I'm sorry. Oh, he's voting in favor. So four of four commissioners voting in favor of that. So sorry about that. Commissioner Lee, you popped, you popped to another screen for some reason. All right. Thank you. So we will get that out um, as well. Um, I'd like to move forward um, with um, uh, Ward 2 Council Member Pinto's update from Pablo. Oh, thank you, uh, uh, Christopher. We appreciate your your response from the mayor's office. Of course. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to not thank you there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. Hi, everyone. How are y'all doing? Very well. How are you? Good, good. Let me just go ahead and share my screen very quickly, if that's all right. Yes, please. Okay. All right. So just wanted to say it's good to see everyone and especially uh, Good to see a lot of you that attended our Chinatown public safety meeting that Council Member Pinto held last week at the MLK Library uh, to discuss improving public safety in Chinatown. I uh, want to give a special thanks to Chair Shankel as well, who gave a great update on behalf of ANC2C, and to Howard Marks as well, who gave some great comments, and to anyone else who uh, was in attendance. It was great to see a lot of turnout at the event and a lot of very engaged residents. I uh, I know we had a lot of tough questions that were asked to all the panelists, but it was good to have a lot of engagement and you know just get a lot of people in the same room to discuss these issues. I think it was very useful and hopefully we can have uh, more discussions like this going forward. Now, I also wanted to give a quick update on uh, the uh, building at 501 New York Avenue, since I know some folks were asking for an update on that last month. Uh, during the forum last week as well, concerns were raised uh, again about the executive's plan to temporarily relocate the central cell block to 501 New York Avenue. And while Council Member Pinto remains disappointed in how community engagement regarding this project has been handled, she has worked to get answers to a lot of your questions and to get the executive to agree to conditions that address the community's biggest concerns. We received a letter dated yesterday from DGS Acting Director Hunter with written confirmation that no release will occur from this site. Uh, that's something that Department of Corrections is now committed to and that sound mitigation measures will be added during the construction process. So these are the two biggest asks that we had of the executive and we're glad that these are uh, finally been granted. We've also learned that the location at 510 Fourth Street Northwest could not be considered as a location because it is federally owned as I know some folks had questions about why this location was chosen over others. That's what uh, we've now been told. And we also received two points of contact for the project going forward, which I'll post in the chat. One from the Department of Corrections for operations related questions, and one for the Department of General Services uh, for construction related questions. And Council Member Pinto will continue to fight on neighbor's behalf to address other concerns around this project. And you can always reach out to our office and to our committee director, Michael Porcello, as well, uh, with any further questions you might have about this. And we'll make sure to continue raising concerns to the agencies and to the executive as they continue on with this project. I just wanted to put my contact information there as well for a second. And I wanted to mention, since we have also recently been hearing more reports of scooters being left in the middle of sidewalks and crosswalks, uh, as a reminder to everyone, scooters must be locked to city infrastructure, such as a pole or a bike rack when they are not in use. If you see any scooters in public space that are not docked to anything, please submit a 311 request. Uh, once you do submit this 311 request, it goes to DDOT, who will very quickly close out the ticket 
And closing the ticket does not mean that it will not be looked at anymore. Closing the ticket means that DDOT has sent it to the scooter provider. So if it's a Lime scooter, say on a sidewalk, when the ticket is closed, that means DDOT has officially sent their message to Lime to say, hey, you need to go and pick this up. And this is because of the new lock two requirements that were instituted uh, just around a year ago, saying that these scooters have to be locked to city infrastructure. So there's a relatively new law and we're still working to see how we can best enforce this. And we're working with DDOT as much as we can to see what we can do to improve enforcement on this issue and try to uh, prevent these from even being in the sidewalk or in public space in the first place as well. So that's something that we're continuing to do. And we do encourage folks to uh, report these on 311 as often as they see them just to uh, make sure that DDOT has all the information available on, uh, you know, maybe which companies are more likely to not have their uh, scooters locked up might mean that there's something more that those companies could be doing as well. And we're in conversations with them as well to try to help with this issue. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got for now. So I'll go ahead and post my links in the chat in just a second. Sure. Pablo, I have uh, two questions for you. Um, um, one is related to the cell, uh, holding cell. Um, do you, do you, have you received or has council member Pento's office received a, a historical packet of how community was notified about this and how this came to be? I know that uh, you know this. This apparently happened before Council um, Member Pinto became a council member. But is is there a, a paper trail, a record of of this that you know of? I can't say that that's something that we have received, but that's something we can uh, go back and ask the agencies for. Yeah, because I I'm just kind of perplexed that you know this this is is coming kind of out of the blue. Uh, that that we're going to move a basically a a holding cell block into the middle of a residential area, basically, which is is just crazy to me that this this is happening. Um, I know we're going to talk about this in just a couple minutes um, as well, but uh, I also wanted to ask about the scooters and bikes. Mm -hmm. Is there an enforcement body, like people that enforce this in the community besides citizens having to put a 311 request in? Uh, that, you know, DDOT, when, so when they're out and about, they have staff that, you know, are in the field and that that's something that they can take note of as well. Um, I'm not sure which other agency would be directly in charge of uh, independent enforcement of that, but uh, that's something we can look into as well as we uh, continue to try to figure out how to best handle these issues. Right, because I, I think that um, I, I'm starting to sound like a, uh, <laughs> a broken record and sometimes like this like militant approach that I, I feel like I, I am not. But I figure that if you don't have people that are out there um, educating mm -hmm. folks that you can't ride these scooters on the bike on the sidewalks, they have to be locked up. Um, mm -hmm. You can't ride your bikes on the sidewalks downtown. We now have bike lanes. We spent nine million dollars on on Ninth Street to put a bike lane in, um, and I see people riding around people on the street. Um, it seems to me like there needs to be an enforcement arm, whether that's DPW, whether it's DDOT, um, it, it is, I don't believe it's the responsibility of MPD to enforce something like this, but there needs to be somebody out there that is, is doing some enforcement. Uh, lately, I, I don't know what has happened in the last two weeks, but I, I have seen more scooters unlocked more bikes unlocked than in any other time um, in the last couple months. They're just all over the place. 
And the latest thing now is that people are taking the little locking mechanism and they're just locking it in the lock um, and leaving them wherever. Uh, mm. Because the, mach- the little device just knows that mm. they are locked, um, but they're locked to nothing. They're locked mm-hmm. to itself, basically. Um, so these are like major issues that we have to work with DDOT and the council member on on codifying this. Um, because this isn't this is something that is we we heard at our at the town hall about people tripping over them. We've heard that numerous times, people being hit. Uh, we don't even know if there is a record uh, that is being kept by the city of individuals that are injured by e-scooters on our sidewalks and our streets. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's even being uh, done. So these are these are just some things that I, I think would be very helpful to take back uh, to Council Member Pinto that what what is ha- what is supposed to be working isn't at all. I would say there's probably 10% compliance. Um, and um, like, why should people do it if there's no repercussions? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. Absolutely. And that's a good note on the scooters just kind of locking to themselves. Cause I know, uh, you know, that that's a good note we can take back to the scooter companies since a lot of them have, you know, tried to give messages to folks who are riding that it has to be locked to something and it won't you know, let you uh, stop your ride, I believe, until you've locked it to something. So if people are easily circumventing that, that's definitely something that they would want to know and that we'd want to share with them as well to see what can be done about that. Yeah. And I think that I definitely don't want to get rid of the scooters. They're definitely a place for for all of this mobility options for people. But, you know, We've heard a couple months ago, we had a, a scooter group come here and, and talk with us. And they were like, oh, we, we have GPS in place and you can't ride on the sidewalks. Well, that's that's baloney because you see their scooters going all over the sidewalks all the time. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just, just totally not working. Um, Commissioner Lee, uh, Commissioner Nigro uh, from, from 6, uh, 2G, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, Howard Barks. Uh, yes, uh, I have a comment and then a question. Um, I, I, I sympathize, I understand Michael's frustration, I sympathize uh, with the sentiments. Um, I'm an avid e- uh, e-bike user, less so e-scooters. Uh, if not for the e-bikes, I'll be you know, hailing cabs, you know, at, at much greater expense and, you know, at, you know, causing much greater congestion. I think, so I think the, the e-bikes are great at getting people, you know, from point A to point B easily, affordably, but not take up too much, you know, roadway. Uh, one concern I have is that, you know, if we, if we're too, if, if we have, if we're, if we're too onerous on, you know, on these uh, providers, you know, they may pull out and out of the market. Um, for example, you know, a line Lyft has indicated that they want to stop supporting the line bikes uh, because you know they're not you know generating enough revenue for the Lyft side of the business. So, my one concern I have is that you know, if we're too strict with the companies, um, then you know they may just pull it all together. Um, but I do understand. Uh, I do sympathize with. Um, you know, uh, people not locking up the bikes appropriately and they, and they fall over. Um, I, I One idea, uh, Pablo, um, is that, you know, if, you know, in the next generation of bikes, a bike can detect that it's fallen over, it's on its side, it could, you know, emit a small beeping noise, you know, so that when people walking by, they see the bike, it's beeping, it knows that, you know, Rather than call three one one, maybe easier just to get people to you know be good citizens and pick them up off the sidewalk and put them aside you know in a way that it's not blocking the way. Now I do this all the time. My daughters hate me when I do this because they want me to sanitize my hands afterwards. It's like it's not COVID anymore, but you know that's what I do just because you know I I don't want this. I want the bikes 
I don't want them in the middle of the sidewalk because they look hideous there. And I don't want them falling over because then it discourages other people from using them. So I just pick them up and move them aside. Um, that aside, my question, Pablo, is um, with uh, Councillor Pinto at the last meeting, there was discussion of some anti-loitering uh, regulations. Uh, did did you get any set? Did you get any indication from her whether she was supportive of such, um, you know, uh, regulations if it was targeted at certain areas? Did did she mention that afterwards? Uh, not to me, at least. No, I'm not sure if she's had discussions about that with other members of our staff. But I can try to uh, follow up with her and see if uh, the council member has any more comments on that since the meeting. Uh, Commissioner Nyson. I mean, Commissioner, sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Negro. Hi. Okay. I'm going to be brief in my uh, statement to Pablo. So, hi, Pablo. How are you? I, I, I guess you didn't expect to see me on here. <laughs> Surprise. Here I am. And I didn't expect you to mention 501 New York Avenue to this group, but I'm glad you did. So, lucky me. So, Pablo, I'm a little bit concerned when you said that uh, Council Member Pinto received a statement from Delano Hunter from the Department of General Services who has nothing to do with the corrections operation and does not speak for Director Faust. So could you forward me that? Because here's the thing, Paolo, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Did she get that email yesterday? Uh, yesterday evening, and I believe earlier today, we okay, sent okay. out the information we have to uh, commissioners from 2C, 2G, and... Well in in ward six as well, whichever I, I forget which so, uh, letter it is there, but uh, yeah, I'm, uh, Pablo, I didn't get it. Oh, apologies. So help me out, yet, Pablo. Out this is very new so and, insulting. Like, I, I got no email from Councilmember Pinto or from Genevieve or from whoever was supposed to send it out. How absolutely insulting that I find this out from you on a 2C commission meeting, talking to the person that is representing the thousands of people that are against it. I can't believe it. I, 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 you know, another unbelievable thing with this entire disaster. Apologies, I'll, I'll double check to ensure that was sent to you, but that was sent out after 5 p.m. today since we were pulling that all together as quickly as possible. I, quick I, I just checked. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll I'll let our team know now since it it was sent to 2G commissioners. You weren't left out purposefully. I'll I'll uh, make sure that you were included on that. So, and here's another thing, Pablo. Why she re and I'll get into this when I talk to the group as a whole. She is refusing to represent us. Okay, we are not standing down on this. We are 100% opposed on this. For her to accept conditions is unbelievable, and we stand by that. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll let her know. Two notes. Thanks. And Thanks. tell her she hasn't responded to my email that I sent two days ago. And I she called me and I called her back and she has yet to call me back. She is not representing her constituents. And that is the bottom line with all this. I don't know who she's representing. It's not the constituents. She is paid. I don't get paid. She needs to represent us. Explain to me, Pablo, why she is not representing us. Uh, council member is doing her best to uh, bring up all concerns raised by neighbors to the agency. Ex except we're opposed. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't want to take too much. I'm done. Yeah. Well, we'll um, I understand Michelle? the frustration, um, but I think that we will, uh, I think the point has been made. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Michelle, I have a question uh, for Commissioner Nig Nigro. What would be your preferred outcome? Um, I we, know that uh, oops, we have to wait till. Can, till, can we hold till on that session. just one second? Um, sure. Uh, uh, Howard Marks. You're on mute, Howard. I should be unmuted. Yes, you are now. Okay, so um, I don't want to get involved in this uh, heated discussion about this uh, thing at six uh, on New York Avenue. Just wanted to loop back to the scooters again, and this is for Pablo. Mm -hmm. I started an organization a number of years ago called Take Back Our Sidewalks. 
which dealt with the, the problems that people who are handicapped, uh, people who are sight impaired, people in wheelchairs, the difficulty they have with these e-scooters uh, laying on the sidewalks. Um, and um, so my question for our, our request of council member Pinto is we desperately need uh, this, uh, the, the veil to be uh, removed from this program. Uh, we have no idea how the city benefits exactly from these scooter companies financially. We have not seen exactly a copy of the agreements that were reached between DDOT and these scooter companies and exactly how much money is the city benefiting from these contracts. This has not been revealed at all to the public. And I think that um, council member Pinto should ask the auditor general to do an audit of this program. I think that is a fair request. You know, Pablo, the city DDOT agreed to a, allow 10,000 additional e-scooters into the, into the district, 10,000. And that's why Michael is seeing many more. And we're all seeing many more of these scooters downtown. What, most of them wind up downtown. 10,000. Yes, 10,000. So if you could get that request, ask Council Member Pinto if she could do a formal request to DDOT and the Auditor General to examine this program and how the district is benefiting. That's a big first step. And secondly, I know that organizations that represent the blind, the handicapped, you know, are considering, you know, whether this program at all may be in violation of the Americans for Disability Act. That's all. You know, in Manhattan, they were banned. Uh, government uh, operated uh, scooters, privately, privately owned scooters are allowed in the borough of Manhattan, but not public. And so I think there's precedent to shut these, this program down. And I know there's strong feelings on either side, but I think if you get that report done or that investigation, that would go a long way to helping us. Thank you, Pablo. That's all I have. Uh, thank you, Howard. It's 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 certainly an accessibility issue, and that's you know why it's something that uh, you know we are constantly working with DDOT to figure out. And I would also encourage you and anyone else that you know has had similar experiences to please reach out to the Committee on Transportation and Environment as well, since they have direct oversight over DDOT, and this is you know something that's really valuable for them to know that Ward Two and downtown residents feel really strongly about and. Um, how it may have impacted your everyday lives or people that you know. So that's something that's really valuable for them to know as well. Uh, and, you know, that, that may be something that they have more information on as well, since, uh, since that's something they're dealing with more directly every day. But it's something that uh, our office works on a lot. And I'll be sure to pass your message along to the council member, Howard. Thank you so much, Pablo. I, I just have two more things for you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, one of the things I, I and this, you know, uh, uh, Chris, you can also take this back to your your groups. Um, uh, I think that it is probably well known that um, GDOT does not have a very uh, good reputation of proper follow through and documentation. Um, in a number of their their issues. One, it was the scooter issue that we've been talking about this evening. Two is related to the little parking things that they have all over the city where they have a number on it, which there are no numbers on 90% of them in 2C. Um, and uh, I've been told they are being removed. Um, I want the I want those rusted, filthy things that are graffitied off our streets. Uh, they need to get their contractor out there to do this. We have provided them with numerous ideas about putting safety stickers on where people pay to park that says, secure your items in your car, hide them, et cetera. DDOT implements a great project and then they abandon it just like they did on 7th Street with the with the um, the flower boxes and the pop-outs along the street that are now all over War II um, and uh, have nothing to do with 7th Street right now. And we don't even know how they get moved all around. Um, so 
GDOT needs some accountability um, on these, these matters, and they just are not following through and doing their due diligence to regulate um, these special projects. Mostly, I, I feel, projects that are, are implemented by people who don't drive or don't use the technology or services that um, they are designing. Um, that's This is my personal opinion about it. So I would love um, for them to start addressing some of these issues that we've been asking for for God knows how long um, in the situation. Um, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was your night <laughs> in this situation. Okay. Thank you. Hey, hey Pablo, real quick. Y'all didn't include me on the email. Oh, I'm really? so sorry, Commissioner. That I, I promised that was. What do they call that when that happens? Uh... <laughs> Slip of um, mind. Let's let's move forward to uh to other local events that impact the community. Oh, so um, sorry. I just wanted to oh, sure. quickly add, yeah, Commissioner Nigro, so sorry. I just checked and your email was omitted accidentally. I've just been told when it was sent. We'll send it to you right now. And I, I got I got it already got it forwarded. <laughs> already oh, got forwarded, got Pablo. Okay. These kind people Perfect. on this call forwarded it to me. Oh well, yeah, I'm I'm glad you received it now and apologies again for that that error. Commissioner Nigro, this is Brian. That is that was my fault. I'm sorry. I typed up all the ANC's emails and I think of ANC two GS5 commissioners because you became six on Friday. So I accidentally left off yours because you were number six, as you know. So my bad. Um, let's move forward. Um, Commissioner Nigro, um, we have you next on our agenda to talk about the local events that impact the community. Okay. Do you want to just give us a, a, a brief background of the situation that is yep. transpiring. And I'm going to be very fun. brief for you guys. I don't want to keep keep long because I appreciate the time, uh, Commissioner Shanko, that you're allowing me here. Uh, my purpose for this call before the to be on this call before the commission is to seek a uh, letter of opposition for the central cell block to be located at 501 New York Avenue, which is an ANC uh, 2G. So 51 New York Avenue currently is used as the transportation management building for the Metropolitan Police Department. Basically, it's a very sleepy building. Nothing happens there. In previous decades, as my constituents know who have been here for a very long time, there has been some intoxicated people kept there during demonstrations and some kids at one time, but that's about it. So what has happened within the past couple months, um, it was me who announced to the community about the central cell block being uh, potentially being relocated to 501 New York Avenue. Drew Turner from Douglas Development and I were talking and he had mentioned, he said, I hear this, this rumor about a central cell block coming for what is a central cell block? And he, you know, I'm like, well, that can't be happening in that building. That's the craziest thing ever. Crazy. I actually didn't believe him. And so I looked on the Department of Buildings website like a couple of days later, and I said, well, if there's anything, it'll be on the Department of Buildings website. And there it was. There was the permitting pro uh, process started. And so uh, there was never any outreach to the community. Um, I was the one who announced it to basically the world. OK, um, and it is my belief that we were never supposed to find out. Now, you'll hear from the government. It was discussed like during some budget meeting in 2019. OK, <laughs> that is not community outreach. So uh, we would not have known about this literally if I had not looked on that Web page that night. Now, moving forward the past um, several weeks, uh, my constituents and I have been very open and fighting this with emails, with meetings, with going to things like this, with talking with Council Member Pinto. What will happen in this building is uh, it's going to be a lot. So it is a 24 seven operation with people who are arrested will be before they go to the courts will be put in this building and then within 24 hours to 48 hours they will see a judge so there will be people going in and out there'll be staff there'll be vendors there'll be a lot of action and this will be all day and all night my constituents are less than 20 feet from this there is a child care center right across the street and uh, also across the new development. No one in the community 
wants this because as my constituents have said who are familiar with the operation, now I've never been arrested. I've talked to people who have been inside the operation and who are familiar with the operation. They said, you do not want this in your neighborhood. People are going to be released. I know he, Director Hunter just sent that little email out. And I don't know if they're going to take the transportation or not. But as can, people who are familiar, they're going to be released into the community if they're not papered. Okay, so that could be literally anyone. And on behalf of those constituents, especially that live right across the street, this is literally insane that this is happening. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I can go on and on and on. I don't want to go on and on and on. And so what we did find out from the Department of General Services when they presented to us is that this has been in the works for more than two years. OK, and they call it temporary. If anyone is familiar with project management, no temporary anything. It takes more than two years of planning. OK, so this is it is our belief this is going to end up being permanent. There are other locations in the city, if this is a, supposed to be a temporary thing, to put it, literally it does not belong at 501 New York Avenue in a residential area across from major developments with lots of kids and people walking around, and we are terribly, terribly concerned. So on behalf of my more than 2,000 constituents and the surrounding property owners that include the United House of Prayer, Brookfield Properties, Boston Properties, Douglas Development, and Homewood Suites, and as I call them 1101 6th Street, all these entities and all of my constituents, we are seeking from the commission a letter of support in uh, opposition to this project. Um, we are not stopping, um, and I, I do not understand why Councilmember Pinto does not support our position completely. So there you go. Very brief, you guys. Got it. Um, any questions or from the commission? Go ahead, Commissioner Trust. Um, sorry, just a, a little bit more background. Mm -hmm. So, it, is is there no other place that could work for this? No. Let me tell you, it was mentioned in the letter you received, or I don't think it was mentioned in the letter. It was okay. So, I was told about a place called Five Ten Four Street, which is a which is a block away from the current. Uh, facility. The current facility is in the Daly Building. Okay, it's underneath the Daly Building. That Daly Building is being redone. So, five ten four Street is a is a courthouse and also has family court, something, a whole bunch of offices, judicial offices, and there is a very large cell block underneath that building, which I've been told. Now, in the middle of July, I sent the head of General Services. I said, "What about this building? What about these cells? If this is temporary, use this." I haven't gotten a response back, but according to Pablo and this email from Brooke Pinto, it's now not being considered. What happened to these weeks of no response? They need to figure out another place, and that was a, I don't know why that it wasn't considered. Either they didn't know about it. I don't know. But the easy solution for them was 501 New York Avenue because of how close it is to the courthouses. And, you know, honestly, if we still if I had not looked on that Web page, we still would not know. And the things would have happened like I think it's supposed to start like October, or November. Right. We would never have found out. And so it's just an easy thing for them to do. D.C. building. Sorry, we're not taking it. Sorry, Commissioner, just wanted to mention quickly that 4th Street location that you mentioned, we were told that the reason it wasn't able to be selected is because it's federally owned is what okay. we've been told. But there's DC entities in there. How about paying some rent? There are DC government entities in there, okay? Figure it um, out. Um, were there any other locations? Well, that's a good that's question, uh, Commissioner states? Strauss. That is a very good question because we have asked that numerous times and there has been deafening silence. So here's my thought about it. There are all these empty office buildings. Again, we are told this is temporary. Find a temporary space that's not across from a child care center and not feet from my constituents, literally feet from my constituents front door. And so that is called the Madison Victoria. Once this thing hits, if it does, no one's going to live there. I mean, that's how that's how this is going to go down. 
Yeah. No one will want to live in that apartment building. It is going to be 21st in and out, in and out, in and out stuff, people hanging around, whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is, this is really, um, brings me back to the Pat Handy shelter, um, in which, um, OGA indicated, OGS indicated that it was a temporary thing and they hadn't even started working on plans or design, uh, before, uh, the building was shut down. So, uh, it'd be interesting to know whether any of those things have even started, um, at this location. Um, any commissioners, any other commissioners have any any questions or concerns? Um, so when people are released from this holding cell, are they supposed to be transported somewhere um, officially or, or are they just released onto the street on their own? Well, let me tell you, Commissioner Lee. So weeks ago, we were told, I was told directly from the Department of Corrections, they are going to be released from the building if they weren't paper, right? This is what, first we were told no, then we were told yes. And now with this email, they're saying now they're going to drive them from 501, apparently, back to the courthouse and release them from there, them. So what's the real answer? I don't believe anything at this point, okay? I, I think there's a legal thing. If you're supposed to be released, I would think you'd be released from 511 York Avenue. But the new that we just got tonight or whenever you all received it, they're going to take them from 511 back to the courthouse? I, I don't, it makes no sense. And I think my belief is they said that to appease people. We're not appeased. I would like to move that we send um, a letter um, to, um, I guess this would be to the Department of Corrections, um, OGS, uh, Council Member Pento's office, the mayor's the mayor, office, the mayor. Um, indicating that we have some grave concerns about this, this potential cell block coming into residential neighborhoods um, and uh, that we need them to reconsider this. And I thank you for that, Commissioner Shankle, because my, and I, I think the overall broad concern should be as, as a body, as a political body here, is that how this came about, and I worry that other things, many other things could potentially happen like this, and this is so disturbing that this is how this went down, that we were, again, never going to find out. Um, so I have a motion on the floor. Uh, Michael, uh, could I amend? Oh, sure. I guess we had to second it, and then we amend it. Is, is that how it works? No, you can do it a friendly amendment first. Like a friendly amendment. Um, uh, repeat your repeat your resolution again, Michael. Just for that I, special. I, I was I was recommending that we send a letter to OGS, um, Department of Corrections, um, the mayor's office, Council Member Pento's office, um, expressing concern um, over the placement of this central cell block in a residential area and that we have concern that there has not been enough community engagement and that there's not enough details that community members know um, about this or even we know about this at this point um, and how this is gonna impact Chinatown and quarter. All right. I mean, Let me just, I, I, Michael, can I say one more thing? So where it is now in the daily building, no one sees anything, right? You're not looking at, no one sees anything that goes on. When this, if this goes to 501 New York Avenue, y'all going to see it and hear it. Now, my understanding is that they're renovating the daily building. And once the building is renovated, they'll move back the whole cell. Is that correct? Uh, no, let me correct you, Commissioner Lee. So there's no end game for this. So this is the this is where we lead to that this is going to be permanent. The daily building renovate there there's not fully funded or not completely funded all this type of thing, and so the end game for this for this does not exist. 
that's how we know it's going to end up at 501 New York Avenue for a very long time. So uh, there is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Oh, geez. Mike, let me ask R Rachel another question. Um, what would you say, I mean, say, for example, the city were to find another location for this holding cell. What would you say to those community members who say, hey, we don't want this in our neighborhood either? Like, what would you say to them? It shouldn't be in a neighborhood. There is spaces in this building, in the city, where it's appropriate. I cannot believe, I do not believe that 501 New York Avenue is the only place, is the entire city that's appropriate. It is absolutely ridiculous for anyone to believe that. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Find it. Find a place near the courthouse now and temporarily renovate it and call it a day. This at 501 is going to be permanent because of how long they've taken it to plan and how much money they're going to spend on it. I don't believe it's going to be temporary. So mm -hmm. I, I, listen, Department of General Services, real estate holdings, mm -hmm. is this the only space? Yeah. Give me a break. I mean, to your point, it does seem like it's such a very, it's a very prominent site, you know, and it's a very poor use for a facility in this area, given how, you know, how much development potential there is around it. And, you know, this doesn't really help in that. And there is like industrial land elsewhere in the city where something like this could go where, you know, it wouldn't, you know, have as much of an impact. Um, it's called could, 510 4 Street. That's in my SMB. Is there a second to the No, motion? it's not. It's in, it's in, it's in Ward it's, 6, technically. I, I'd yeah. like to call the, I, I need to call the motion. Is there a second? If there's not a second, we can let it, uh, it will die. A second. Okay, there's a second well, by Commissioner Lee. Um, all those in favor, could you raise your hand? So I see oh, three. I don't see Commissioner Rowe. So I'm going to say three, one, zero. Um, as we kind of move forward, uh, we'll send a letter, uh, that letter um, requesting uh, a response to that. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank Knight. you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. We're keeping up the fight. Yes. Oh, Thank you. Uh, Thank Chair Shankel, I have a quick question for you. If it yes, was sir. a... If it, if it had only gotten two votes, is it pass or is it uh, fail? Um, we have, well, we uh, two votes would have uh, failed in this in this ANC. We have always okay. done a plus one majority, right? Right. Majority. Okay. Um. I'd like to move now to the Susan G. Komen uh, More Than Pink Walk. And um, is Lisa on with us this evening? Hi, Lisa. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me okay? Yes, hey. yes, yes, yes. How are you? Okay, well, thank good, good. Thank you, Commissioner Shankel, for having me and the rest of the um, group. So I represent Susan G. Komen Walk, and I apologize, I'm getting over COVID, so I'm a little... Oh, under, so sorry. <laughs> no worries. Of course, it reared its head again. Um, the Komen Walk is planning to come um, to Pennsylvania Avenue at Freedom Plaza. Um, we're doing a load-in on <clears throat> Saturday, September 9th, and then um, the event on Sunday, September 10th. Uh, this is an annual event that's been happening, I think, for the past, I want to say, 30 years. Um, and then I can share a map of the route of the setup or give you some more details on expected attendance. Please. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> All right. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> So um, this is a similar setup as we've had in the past where we'll be utilizing Freedom Plaza and that's where our setup will be on Saturday during the day. Um, so no roads will be closed or anything on Saturday. We'll be setting up um, some tents um, Sunday, 
So we're starting at midnight. So overnight is when we would close Pennsylvania between 14th Street and 12th Street to set up the infrastructure on the street with um, more tents, our stage, and some sponsors. Um, the route is going to continue. This is up at Freedom Plaza, down Pennsylvania Avenue, the third to Independence, and then loop back and come back here. Um, we're anticipating about 3,000 people for the event, uh, similar to last year. And um, we anticipate getting the roads uh, reopened around Freedom Plaza um, no later than 3 p.m., but last year I think it was 1.30, so we're hoping to kind of meet that. And then obviously the roads um, <clears throat> besides directly around Freedom Plaza will reopen directly behind the last participant, which I believe um, was around 12.30 or 12 o'clock last year. I'm sorry, Lisa, did you say how many participants? I'm sorry. I think I might have, but I was speaking quickly. Um, I think we're anticipating around 3,000 participants. 3,000, okay, got it. And this is an event that has been going on and well coordinated. Um, are there any uh, concerns from the commissioners or questions? Um, any concerns or questions from the community? Then I'd like to move that we send a letter of support for the Susan G. Coleman um, pink one. Second. Okay, I'm going to call that as Mr. Rowe because um, I heard her louder. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Okay, so four zero zero for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Feel better. Please feel better. Yeah, thanks. It's, <laughs> open. It's, it's lurking, it's coming back, and uh, I've seen a lot of it recently. Yeah, thank you. Um, good night, everyone. Good night. Um, APCA, um, next on our agenda. Um, I have Project 1972 Inc., trade name Chef. Um, and um, it is a new retailer's Class C tavern, Abra 125169. And do we have Diane on the phone with us? Or someone representing that establishment. Hello, Commissioner Schenkel. Pleasure to work with you again. Hi. Oh, hey, how are you? <laughs> Doing well. Um, my name is Cameron Mixon. For those who haven't seen me before, uh, I'm an attorney with the Veritas Law Firm, uh, counsel to the applicant. Um, it is, as uh, Commissioner Schenkel said, um, Chief is a uh, application is a, as a um, social club for um, primarily marketed towards uh, female professionals. Um, it's applying for a Class C uh, tavern license to serve uh, beer, wine, and liquor alongside cold prepared foods um, with seating for about 21 people um, in total occupancy of 57. It's primarily, um, it's, a, it's part of a larger chain network um, with a uh, few locations in major cities in the U.S., uh, primarily designed to facilitate um, social connections and uh, potential opportunities um, for people in, um, for uh, ambitious women in um, uh, executive leadership in uh, uh, major professional careers. Um, very, very simple application. Just want to, they want the ability to um, be able to serve cocktails, wine glasses um, uh, during some of the events and, and networking social gatherings that they have. And the the or is the the hours of operation for this is eight to midnight. Yes, that's correct. Eight a.m. to to twelve midnight. And is is this a? Is, I don't know this. Is this a storefront? Um, my understanding is that these the um, the the purpose of the license is to serve um, entirely on premise. Got it. So, it are, are the the this is the it, old Le Pan Quotidian, I think, at Fourteenth and K. Is that right? Oh yeah, that would be it, probably. I I'm guess looking at the yeah, that's the address. I'm on Google's. <laughs> With this being a a social club, do uh, do people like do they do a membership or or something to go or anybody can just drop in? 
it's a a private membership um, where they gotcha. they vote for uh, kind of compatibility with the the mission statement of the of the organization. So it's not street level. Um, I'm not sure what, what unit they've worked out. I believe it is um, okay. higher in the building. Is my understanding. I see. Okay, so not custom what you thought. Okay. Got it. Um, any other questions, commissioners? Any questions from community members? I would like to move we send a letter of support um, for um, chief, uh, chef. Uh, uh, chief. Chief, chief, sorry, chief. <laughs> Whoops. Oops. Chief. An, uh, executive uh, officer. Uh, yes. Um, is there a second? Uh, Commissioner Lee seconding. All those in favor? So four, four, four of four voting in favor um, of that. Um, what are annual dues, Cameron? Um, I'm actually not aware. It might be available on their FAQ on the website, but um, I have only um, come to know about this through the, the their application for the license. Awesome. So we'll get a letter of support off for you guys. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Um, next on our agenda is, is it a man? Is that the name? Hey, good, good evening, Commissioner. Happy summer, everyone. Um, it's Mama. Mama, that's it, that's it. Okay, got it, totally wrong. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> No, it was totally wrong. Um, <laughs> hi, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> Thank you for being here. So it's Maman at 9, 9th, Street C, 9th Street LLC um, for a new retailer's class C restaurant. It's Abra 124950. Uh, that's 750 9th Street, which is at the corner of 9th and 8th Street. And go ahead, Minam. Yeah, correct. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Minal Mahmoud with Malia O'Brien and Sandground on behalf of the applicant. And I'm joined uh, with um, Gus Firestein, their um, chief development officer. And this will be a Maman Cafe and Bakery. And it's a total occupancy of um, 149 with 64 indoor seats. There is no outdoor presence. And we are requesting the hours of 7.30 a.m. to midnight. And is this um is, is is this kind of like I, I get like I, when I looked up look, looked this up it looked like it was kind of like bakery and food exactly exactly uh, it's a cafe and bakery cafe and bakery got it got it um and from eight a.m. to midnight seven thirty oh seven thirty got it got it yes awesome. Um, does any commissioners have any questions? I'm really excited that this corner is being utilized on the street, which I have not seen activated. I don't think in the 10 years, 12 years that I've lived downtown. Um, so I'm happy to see that this is, is happening. Um, I'd like to move that we send a letter of support. Seconded. Okay. All those in favor? So four of four voting in favor of that. Awesome. We'll get that letter of support off to you. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Commissioner. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, uh, next, I'm going to probably uh, um, butcher this as well. Uh, Abundai? Okay. Um, a substantial change to the retailer's class D license. It's ABRA 109347. Do you have anybody representing the establishment? Hi there. My name is Akina from Abunai. Hi, Akina. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Can thank you, you for the invite. Oh, most definitely. Can you tell us what you're, uh, what's going on? So I am the owner of Abunai, um located Abunai. at 1920 L Street. 
Um, I've been there since April of 2017 and uh, maintained a uh, beer and wine um, ABRA license since then. Um, I, I'm looking to uh, expand my hours um, just to see if I could, I guess, engage with um, a different market and I guess maybe perhaps it will produce more revenue for the shop as well um as you know like during COVID and things like that I limited my hours and then I expanded it again and I want to uh keep doing that uh because I definitely had some feedback that they wanted uh the shop to stay open longer and um this is one of the reasons why and I made a you know, new happy hour menu, like small plates, a different type of menu that would be more for a night crowd. And also I do have a breakfast menu as well. So I wanted to expand the morning hours and um, hopefully, you know, maybe the community would want to visit us uh, early or even later than usual. Got it. Thank you. Um and you're you're you have hours that are kind of um, starting 10 30 11 a.m going to six on Saturdays and Sundays and Fridays until eight Monday through Friday until eight um, and you're looking to do a seven day a week 8 a.m to 2 a.m is that is that right Yes, I wanted to, ex I, I was looking to expand as much as possible and that was the option, so I took it. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, it sounds like uh, you're exploring with breakfast and a little bit of a later a later crowd as well. Um, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Strauss, this is in your neck of the woods, I believe, at 1920L. Um, do any commissioners have any concerns? I have no concerns. Awesome. Um, is there a motion to send a letter of support? Second. Okay. Somebody else. Uh, I will move to send the letter of support. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> all right. And second. I uh, second it. All right. All right. And all those in favor? Raise your hand. So four or four commissioners voting in favor of that. Um, would you uh, like us to send um, a, a substantiated uh, letter. Stipulated. Uh, stipulated. Thank you. <laughs> stipulated letter as well. Thank you. Woo. I'm, I'm tired. A, a stipulated letter that, that would allow the license to go into effect um, once they receive the letter. Yes, thanks. Thanks okay. so much. I really appreciate it. Then, um, then I'd like to move that we send um, uh, sub <laughs> substantial. Oh my God. <laughs> a letter for a stipulated license. <laughs> Second. Awesome. And all those in favor. <laughs> four or four voting in favor of that. Awesome. We'll get that off uh, right away. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is 202 Lounge One LLC, trade name 202 Lounge One, a new retailer's Class C Tavern. Um, it's Abra 125294 at 609 H Street, uh, Northwest. Do we have anybody representing the establishment? Yes, Jeff Jackson here. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. And I have Beyond on uh, the line also. Awesome. Hi there. So Lounge 2, yes, Lounge 202 is just going to be a full service restaurant. Um, we're going to provide entertainment. And um, we're going to have a full menu up until closing, as opposed to normally a restaurant have full menu two hours before closing their kitchen. But we're going to keep the kitchen open until at least one hour prior to closing. Excuse me for being out of breath, but I just left my cycling class. <laughs> no problem. I wish I could be cycling right now. Um, yes. 
So what is this taking the, like, what is, what space is this going into? Right there, right across from Walk and Roll. Oh. It used to, yeah, the, the building right across from Rock and Roll. I forgot the name of the place. Um, right. It used to be a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Sit right there close to the corner. Yeah. It was the last restaurant close to, I believe, 6 and H. Right. Um, yes. Um, look here. Um, let me just pull that up one second. Whoops. I'm sorry, I don't remember why I looked at this previously. I just don't remember where it was. Uh, so it's directly across from the Wall Luck House. Is that right? Next to. Next to, directly next to the Wall Luck House. Right. And across from Walk and Roll. And it, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I see. Um, and it it is just, uh, there is no, I don't believe there's any entertainment endorse, endorsement on this. Is that correct? Yes, there is. There is an entertainment endorsement on it. Just music. Oh, there is. No cover charge, right. No, no cover charge or anything. Okay. And is it, is it, what, why, if it's a restaurant, why a tavern license? Okay, because the last person that owned the establishment when COVID hit and they had limited people walking around downtown, he couldn't meet his 45% food sale requirements. Got it. And that's been the problem in that area. You can't force people to come into your restaurant. And if you don't meet the food sale requirements, then basically you're going out of business and Abra can come and uh, take the license. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that's why he's keep keeping. He has a full menu, and keeping the kitchen open to like one hour prior to closing. And is the intention that um, you would be doing? Um, you would be like like the hours currently go until two and three, which are the max hours. Would the intention be to keep that open until that time? Not necessarily. Okay. No, not necessarily. It's just that we put down the max hours, depending yeah. on how the clientele is. Mm -hmm. um, Normally, most people is out of that area, like around maybe midnight or one o'clock. Yeah. Um, and she was even considering being that it was, because uh, she has a special clientele too, so she was even considering on having a uh, reimbursable detail parked outside. Right. Um, I am. Uh, well, commissioners, do you have any questions or concerns? Any community? Um, I just had a quick question because there is an entertainment endorsement on this and it does adjoin a residential building. Are there plans to try to, you know, mitigate the noise for the neighbors so that we don't have you back in a meeting in a year's time where everybody's yelling at each other <laughs> um, thank you that was that was my concern as well that it's right next to the wall lock house and there's some seniors living there so there are different levels of noise tolerance right what the, has there been any discussion with wall lock house I think I'm muted. Could you hear me? I, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, no, not currently, but the speakers is just going to be in front of the uh, restaurant. It's not going to be big speakers or it's not going to be having a uh, loud boom box or anything of that sort. It's just going to be uh, conversational type music playing so people can still have a conversation while they're eating, but we can also meet with them. And um, we can turn up the volume. And what I used to do when I was heading up Abra, we can do a tester where uh, we can go inside one of the residents or the apartment and turn up the music to a certain level that it can't be heard inside the apartment. And that's where it would stay. Got it. Um, <clears throat> I, I am, um, I am, um, concerned that um that um 
the law luck house has not been approached. I just want to make sure that we're not going to run into to uh, challenges um, with them um, as we move through this process. I see your protest hearing is the 28th. Is that correct? Yes. And it has been placarded? Um, yes. Okay, got it. Um, okay. Um, now, do you have a contact for them? Um, yes, we can get a contact for you. Okay. For them. Um, so that we can we can have you in touch with them. Um, okay. Um, uh, commissioners, what are your what are your thoughts? Go ahead, Commissioner Lee. Uh, Mr. Jackson, a uh, question yes. for you. Uh, yes. The music will be outside. Uh, the no. speakers will be outside on the street. Oh no 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 no. It, uh, everything is inside. Inside. Okay. And so you you just. Playing, you're just playing music for people to eat to, to, to listen to while they're dining. Exactly. Uh, do you anticipate any dancing? Well, we don't want to restrict it if somebody wants to dance, but we're not moving any tables out the way or anything to make a dance floor. A, so there'll be no dance floor? Correct. Um, <clears throat> so I know that you are uh, you are totally within your your right to go after any um, type of license that you want. Yes, um, I have always found it challenging when we we mix like I'm doing a restaurant and I have and I'm going after a tavern license and we have entertainment and we're doing dancing endorsements. Um, and the reason that is, is we may start off as a restaurant and the business model changes and now we are more of a club, a, a nightclub kind of operation um, than a restaurant. Um, so I, I'm, I'm always leery of, of when we get into situations where we're a restaurant, but we're a tavern. But I understand the percentage um that you are are challenged with here um as well um i i would i would highly recommend that um you contact members of the wallach house and community um and that you do to go through that testing process um Commissioner Shankel? Yes. Uh, can we put that in our letter, a request to the applicant to do that? Um, or does that require a protest letter? It, it would really require a protest letter at this point. Okay, okay. got it. Um, but I'm not in a, I have not heard from anybody that there was an issue, but okay. the wall, members of the Walla community are, are, um, marginalized community members um so i want to make sure that we have adequate representation for them um i'm really i'm, I'm kind of torn on this commissioners i i part of me um Yeah, I, I, part of me, I'm, I'm just thinking, um, part of me uh, believes that we need to make sure that there is adequate engagement with with law, well, luck. Um, the other part, I, I have not heard anything um, from any community members opposing this. Um, and what we'd be willing to do is uh, sign an enter to a settlement agreement that the kitchen would stay open at least two hours prior to closing, just like the restaurant requirements. Say, 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 say again, I'm sorry? Yes, we would be willing to uh, enter to a settlement agreement and have the same type of conditions as the restaurant, saying that the kitchen has to stay open at least two hours prior to closing. Got it. 
versus versus oh closing and then right, um, right. exactly basically like for a tavern basically you don't have to keep the kitchen open past a certain hour got it but so I, food will be always available a full menu will always be available up until two hours prior to closing just like the restaurants uh, I, I would i would i would uh uh, Mr. Jackson, I would actually feel much more comfortable um, entering into a settlement agreement like that with you. No problem. We'll be willing to sign it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do. Um, I, I'm going to do some. I'm going to do two things. Um, let's let's um, kitchen open to us. Um, Okay, so here's here's um, let's 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 do this, commissioners. Um, if we put forward a motion to um, at this point, since the since the protest hearing is on the deadline is August twenty eighth. Um, can we put forward a motion that um, we will, if we have not reached a settlement agreement, uh, an executed settlement agreement by August 28th, ANC 2C will submit a letter of protest for the license. And that, that way we, we are covered otherwise Otherwise, if a letter of protest is reached, I mean, a lot, I'm sorry, if a settlement, let me start over. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to recommend that we, if. If we get an executed settlement agreement by August 28th, we send a letter of approval. If we are unable to reach that, we send a letter of protest. Yes, that okay. is correct. Choose your own adventure. Yeah, choose your own adventure. <laughs> Does that work, Commissioner, since we're on this time? Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. Okay. So um, I, I will uh, so move what Kristen just said. Is there a second? I'll second myself. Sure. Why okay, not? Kristen. Uh, Dr. Rowe seconds her. There's a second on that. Um, all those in favor? Awesome. So four or four commissioners voting in favor of that. Uh, Mr. Jackson. Uh, do you want to prepare language on this, or do you want me to prepare language? I do prepare language. I'm sorry, say again. You broke up on me. I'm sorry. I say I'm, I'm comfortable with you preparing the language. Okay. I will uh, put the language together, and I will send you something over um, in the next couple of days. No problem. But I get it signed. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thanks for being so flexible as well. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll also get your contact for the Wall Lock House. Thank you so much. Um, next, we'll move on to transportation and public space. Um, street planners on ball bouts um, around Ferret Square. And Andrew Huff, uh, Associate Director of Member and Government Relations from the Golden Triangle Business Development. Hey, good afternoon. Good evening, How everybody. You? How's everybody tonight? Very Thank well. you for good, good. Thank you for having me. Um, Commissioner Strauss, do I sent my slides to you late? Should I uh, share my screen or did you get them and want to share your screen? I'm happy to do it either way. I you just can go ahead and share. Okay, great. Thank you. Give me one second, please. All right, can you guys see that all right? Yes, yep. we can. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, so good evening, everyone. My name's Andrew Huff. I'm with the Golden Triangle uh, Business Improvement District. Uh, we are one of the two downtown bids. We cover about 44 square blocks. Uh, DuPont, our boundaries are roughly DuPont Circle to the north, Pennsylvania Avenue to the south, 16th Street to the east, and 21st Street to the west. Uh, and I appreciate your time tonight. I'm here uh, seeking a letter of support uh, in essence, for a DDOT public space permit. Uh, we've been working with DDOT already. And as you know, this is part of the process is to get the letter. 
these are some planters that are going uh, hopefully to be installed on the 17th and I Street corner of Farragut Square. And you can see in the, in the, um, in the image there, it's the bulb out there at the, at the park, which is controlled by DDOT and not the park service directly adjacent from the Army Navy Club. We have, uh, through the Office of Planning, you, you guys are probably familiar with the Streets yes. for People grants that were distributed during COVID yes. for uh, public space and street activation. So these have been funded by an OP grant through Streets for People. So I'll get you a little bit closer. And I'll also add that I'm pinch hitting for our uh, planning staff tonight. So uh, bear with me. So this is a little bit closer uh, look uh, at what the planters will look like. So it's basically three clusters of planters. Uh, each cluster, and you'll see on the next slide, contains four planters uh, of various sizes. Uh, you can see the, the dimensions there from the curb to curb, curb to planter, curb to bus stop, et cetera. And this gets you a little bit uh, a better idea of what we're talking about in terms of, of uh, measurements and distances. Uh, while you take a look at that, I'll, I'll let you know that the bid will be uh, maintaining these. We've uh, entered into a maintenance agreement with DDOT, which is very typical. Um, so we'll be planting, maintaining the plant material, uh, you know, making sure that there's no trash or debris that gathers in it. We're already talking about some uh, kind of steps we can take in advance as it relates to rodents to keep them out before we before we fill them up. Please. Uh, we don't have the planters yet. Yeah, yeah got to think about the rats. Uh, we expect them to be delivered uh, in September or October. Uh, so they'll be started, you know, with the fall planting. They'll be planted with uh, native plant materials to, to our area, pollinators. You guys are probably familiar with our rain gardens, which are also full of native plants, mainly, uh, which, which act as pollinators as well. So that's it. I have those three slides. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them if I can. And if I can't, I will follow up uh, tomorrow. Do you know? Do you know what the the planters are made out of? That is a great question, and I don't. But I will let you know tomorrow. Okay, that would be that would yeah. be great. I don't. They're um, they're made by a company called Vestra. Uh, it's the same company that uh, manufactured our parklets that you might have seen. We've got four parklets, these pink and yellow outdoor seating areas. So it's the same company that manufactures those. Um, I can give you more information on material and color. I'm not sure if this is representative of either material or color. Got it. Um, and and why, why did you, why was this area selected? Do you, is any particular reason? Um, well, uh, to be frank, we had some extra Streets for People grant funding that we needed to use up or was going to be returned to the district. So we took a look around Farragut. Um, you guys probably know that the mayor uh, included in her budget about $10 million for some type of redevelopment of Farragut to be determined. Uh, we'll be engaging with you guys on that, obviously. Um, so but we've already been thinking about ways to attract people uh, especially from the 800 block of Connecticut Avenue, which mm -hmm. links Farragut Park to Lafayette Park. All mm -hmm. those tourists at the White House. Yep. Um, we've had lots of conversations what we what we can do to attract their attention and pull them down into our neighborhood uh, instead of going to the Reagan building for lunch, which apparently is very popular. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of how this location, and it's a big wide space. There's not a lot of issues, uh, we don't think with uh, any access. Got it. Mm -hmm. is um when is your when is your letter due uh, oh that's a very good question um so our permit is sitting in tops you know it's still under right. review Got so it. you it's know probably tops. yeah yes uh -huh. yeah it's in tops it. um so okay. you know in the next few weeks if possible i know it's august in dc so uh, yes all right um this is this looks good to me i appreciate planting and and uh, it should be pretty. Yeah, it should be really pretty. I think it's a great. I see thing. Commissioner Rose hand up on my oh, uh, screen, I'm sorry, Chairman. I just FYI. I just was curious if these planters are replacing anything. Are you losing seating or anything like that? No, no. This is all just wide open, kind of cavernous space. Gotcha. Thank you. Sure. Good, good space to um, 
drive my scooter around over there. I'm just yeah. Kidding. Oh, they do. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> From earlier. At the end of this call. <laughs> right. Um, uh, well, I will follow up with you tomorrow, Mr. Chairman, on the on the materials and color, and I'll copy you, Commissioner Strauss, as well. That's great. Um, we have uh, Kasha again. Hi. Yes. Quick question about planters. Uh huh. Um. Just um about the planters over here underneath the archway. Mm -hmm. Um, is your group responsible for those as well? I don't believe so. What 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 are you referring to as to the archway? Um, it's the planters underneath the archway, right in front of Walgreens. Um, no, the downtown no. archway. I think she's yeah. speaking to. That's the downtown bid. Yeah, I think, okay. yeah. That's a different group. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. our sister bid uh, who we share a border with them. So they're they're just the bid next door. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. And, and if you just Google downtown DC bid, uh, you'll find their website and you can provide them with that feedback or, or ask your questions. Thank you. Awesome. So I'd like to move that we send the letter of support uh, for the Golden Triangle's um, bulb out street planners. Okay. A second by second. Commissioner Lee. And all those in favor? So four of four commissioners voting in favor of that. Awesome. Right. Thank you for your time, everybody. Awesome. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Are there any other um, pieces of business this evening? I just, I don't know if we need to mention uh, oh. publicly that we intend to move to a hybrid meeting starting next month. Yes, yes, we are um, securing space um, at the MLK library for a hybrid model uh, in which individuals will be connecting uh, virtually and can be in person um, at that meeting. Um, it's something that community members um, have expressed the desire to go back. And I think we're one of the uh, few a and C's that have continued to be in a virtual, totally virtual um, uh, process. Um, so we're going to start moving back to to that situation. Thank you for that update, Commissioner Lee. Yes, uh, is it um, is it done? Do have A &Cs provided like food at these events, like pizza or water or something to? Because it falls during dinner time for many people. I'm just curious whether the library will let that and whether you know the city would allow us to use some of our money or something like that just to get people to come. Um, we do not or have not um, in the past uh, done that. Uh, we are not, uh, I, I have to go back and refer to the language, but we are not permitted to provide um, food uh, or meals. We're not permitted to provide meals. We can provide a snack or something like that. There's there's specific language that is in our legislation on what we're allowed to do um, and mm. not to, uh, but it is something that we can, we can talk about. I, I know that um, there has uh, been, actually I see in the chat, um, an individual that has expressed concern about having food and um, uh, a lot of uh, individuals who have housing or food insecurity may um, just come to our meeting yeah. to eat. <laughs> well, I, did, I did not consider that. Yeah. So uh, it's something for us to think about as well, but we're, I'm happy to entertain any of this. Um, uh, Commissioner Rowe, did you want to talk about anything about the executive director or the website? I just wanted to bring those things back into the conversation. I think they kind of dropped off of our radar, but we had talked about hiring an executive director and also about hiring someone to help us um, update and redo our website. And I just wanted to put that back on the agenda for a conversation. Um, I think we we have just not moved forward, and I'm not sure what our next steps are. So yeah. So uh, the website is is on my plate. I'm just uh, I'm in Europe for August. So when I get back, 
Gotcha. Yeah, I'm in Lisbon, so both. Oh, Tom and I are. It's uh, yeah, one. <laughs> Michael and I'm where we are. Yeah, uh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so I, I, I will get that going uh, with September when I'm back. Awesome. And uh, it'd be funny, Becky, if you're in London as well. I have reached out to some folks that have been executive directors of other ANCs, um, inquiring about their interest. Um, and you know, two of them are very overextended right now. Mm -hmm. um, so we almost are kind of having to go on our own with this. So um, I yep. want someone who has experience with uh, working with the ANCs, working with government agencies, et cetera, uh, in that realm, but uh, definitely want to, to have, you know, continue to have that conversation. Okay. What's the budget for something like this? Like, a thousand dollars a month, two thousand dollars a month. Um, I, I think it's something that we have to negotiate what we want them to do um, for us. And um, for me, um, I don't. I don't know. Um, I know Commissioner Rowe has been helping me with the the letters and um, all the all the yeah. help me with this fund this building project after hours, et cetera. Um, it would be great to have somebody that can take some of that, those activities off our plate and we can say, yes, we need to send a letter of support for this or or this process and have someone that's their main function to do that. How much are other NCs paying their executive directors? Um, well, it depends because some ANCs receive a ton more money than we do oh, um, really they receive you know huge huge allotments where we are just a small allotment that we receive uh, you know it's based on commissioners some commissioners have 10 commissioners uh, which, which okay. is crazy yeah so, i don't want that yeah. sorry <laughs> no. i love having four i love having four so 10 commissioners oh my yeah. god that's insane yes but i would like um i would like um for us to um to work on that over the next month and see if we can get some something moving in september as well okay that would be great thank you i just I've, wanted to make sure it stays on our radar because it, it's something that we were employing a DC resident, hopefully, and uh, yes. and also taking some of the logistical stuff off of everybody's plates. Yes, that would be very helpful. All right, um, I don't have anything else. Um, if there's no other business, um, is there a motion to adjourn our meeting? So moved. Oh, so moved. Oh, we're out of here. Fantastic. <laughs> Our next meeting, I believe, is September 12th. Do we have to vote on that? <laughs> oh, no, we do not have to vote. We're done. Uh, it's September 12th um, at 6 p.m. And we will be sending out details about where um, in the library we will be meeting. But we will also continue to use uh, this link um, so that um, people can join remotely if they desire. Thank you so much. We appreciate everybody being here tonight and yeah, have everyone. a great rest of August and have a wonderful time in Lisbon. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> have a great time, y'all. And a great time in London too. Yes, exactly. Have a good night. Good night all.